Hello my charmed ones and welcome back to my channel for another video. And if this is your first time with me, I'd like to say welcome. My name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who helps overwhelmed women manage their time, energy, and expectations to get all their creative ideas out of their head and onto paper so they can get down to business creating their dream life. So if that sounds interesting to you, I will leave some links down below in the description box where you can check out more of my work online and feel free to check out some of my latest free productivity tools over at thecharmshop.com. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering one of my most frequently asked questions when it comes to like the business side of my life. And that is all about how I built my own website. Yes, I built my own website myself. I didn't pay for it. I did it all myself from scratch. And this is a topic I get a lot of questions about. So I thought I would just make one dedicated video on this topic and answer all of the most common questions I get about my website. So that is what we are going to cover today. And what I've done in order to make this video as organized and succinct as possible is I have put together a little bit of a slide show. Um, I know some people don't love it when I do slideshows, but it really does help me to stay like on topic. And for those of you who are watching who are international viewers, it always helps to be able to see some of the things that I'm saying on screen if English isn't your first language. Plus, you guys can always go ahead and take screenshots of some of the slides, right, if you want to refer back to them instead of having to watch the whole video over again. So I hope you guys will bear with me with this style of video. I find it to be very helpful for the maximum number of people who are watching. So let's go ahead and jump in to how I built my own business website. Okay, so how I built my own business website. Before we jump into the content, I want to remind you guys to do three little things for me if this topic is interesting to you. First, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. There's a little subscribe button somewhere on YouTube. You hit subscribe, you get to see all of my future videos. And if you like this content, I'm sure you're going to love some videos I've got coming down the pike for you. Of course, also please give this video a thumbs up and also feel free to share it with other people if you think this topic would be helpful for some business friends of yours. If you've got friends or family members or coworkers that are interested in building their own website, starting their own online business, I'm sure this is gonna be insightful for them. And also feel free to go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. That is where I share the behind the scenes of my productivity in life and business with you all there. Okay, so first let's do a rundown of what exactly you're gonna to learn today. So how I built my own business website, that's basically what we're gonna to learn today, but I'm gonna to talk to you specifically about the platforms, plugins, and software that I use. That's something I get lots of questions about. I'm gonna talk about how I get it to look and function exactly as I want it. I know that's a tricky thing for a lot of people. They have a vision for what they want their you know, website to do in their head, but they have a hard time figuring out how to make their website look a certain way or function a certain way. I'm gonna talk about how I was able to accomplish that. I'm gonna talk about how much it costs me a year to run the website, another really popular question. A lot of times money is a big factor in how you're gonna be setting up your website, the choices and the options you're gonna to wanna to put into it. So I'm gonna be really crystal clear with you guys about how much it costs me per year to run my website. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how I actually learned to create websites and use all of the fancy technology that goes on behind the scenes. I know that this is a big barrier to entry for a lot of business women out there, a lot of business people out there. I'm speaking mostly to women, I'm sure, but for fellas out there as well, I know that technology can be a bit of a barrier for you as well. And so I wanna share with you guys a little bit of insight on like how I learned to do this process and you know how I'm kind of always keeping up to date on all of the latest technologies and the new plugins and the new softwares because I am someone who is constantly evolving my website and adding to it and making it as functional as possible so it meets my needs and the needs of my customers and my community. So we'll talk about that as well. Then at the very end, I want to talk to you guys about the CEO Strategy Planner. Yes, I'm going to talk about something of mine that I think you guys are going to find valuable. Basically, I've created the ultimate business planning tool for creatives, and it can help you to make the best possible use of your business website and platforms online. No, it's not going to help you actually create your website, but it'll help you plan out the project and the objective and really get to use marketing yourself properly on your website once you have it up and running. So yes, part of today's video is me showing you something awesome and valuable that you might consider buying, but there is absolutely no pressure to buy and you will still get tons of value out of this video if you keep an open mind. 
So who is this class for? I just wanna make sure that you guys are very crystal clear on who this video is for, who this information is geared towards. So this is geared towards anyone who considers themselves a creative business person. So online shop owners, designers, photographers, coaches, authors, digital or physical product creators or curators, to name a few. It's also for any current or aspiring influencers. So if you're a blogger or YouTuber, Instagram influencer, podcaster, et cetera, and you're interested in starting a website, then this is for you. And this is also for anyone who works in digital marketing for yourself or others. I think this is just great information to have as someone who works online and works in the digital sphere and space. So yeah, that's for you as well. This class is for you, this video is for you, if any of those apply to you. So let me really quickly introduce myself. I'm sure most of you who are watching are already within my community, but I'm sure there might be some new people, new faces that are joining me today. So hello, welcome. My name is Alexis. And like I already mentioned in my intro, I'm known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I am a full-time creative entrepreneur and I sell and design productivity and business tools to help other creative women get their ideas out of their head and onto paper so they can get down to business. And maybe my biggest claim to fame, you know, this like nice little resume blip that people like to hear about from me is that in 2014, I left my stable Fortune 50 career to work full-time for myself. I now run a six-figure passive income business from home or from wherever I am at the moment. And I've taught hundreds of women my methods and processes, and I would love to pass on some of my wisdom to you as well. So that is a little bit about me. Now let's go ahead and jump into how I built my business website. First thing you need to know about my business website is that it is a self-hosted WordPress website. So my, web, my website is what is known as self-hosted, meaning that I pay a monthly fee to a company to host my website on their servers, and then I use website building software to create my own custom website. So my website itself is hosted through Bluehost, that's my hosting software, and I use a shared cloud-based hosting option, which is a little bit more expensive than your you know, regular sort of um, like blog and website hosting, um, but it's not as expensive as having like a dedicated server. So it's a nice like middle ground that I find to be very useful for me being a business owner. Now, my website is built on the software WordPress, okay? So that is wordpress.org, not wordpress.com, meaning that it's the website building software that you use for self-hosted sites. It's not the wordpress.com like free blogs, right? So I have a completely like independent self-hosted WordPress website. Now, how I customize the look of my site to get it the way I want. To make my site look exactly the way I want it, I don't have to code or use HTML. I know that's a very common question people ask me. And really, that is so 20 years ago to be really like custom coding your own websites. Nowadays, everything is plug and play. I do know a little bit of HTML for myself, like enough to like make the teeniest little tweaks or figure out if something's going wrong on my site, kind of like a troubleshooting, but you absolutely do not need to know how to code or do anything on HTML nowadays to build your own custom website. So I purchase WordPress enabled website themes as a template for myself So and for my sites. So essentially when you go self-hosted, you buy your URL, you pay for your hosting, you download the wordpress.org website software onto your server, when I do this through um, uh, Bluehost, it's all like kind of in the behind the scenes of me getting set up on my website in Bluehost. And then I'm able to choose a theme and it becomes like a template for my for my site. So the structure of how I want my site. And there are themes out there for everything. If you want your blog to look like a, a blog, if you want it to look like a, you know, a, an e-commerce site the way I have it, a membership site. If you want something to look like, you know, something for a professional speaker or an author or, you know, a sales page for a product. There are WordPress templates out there for everything that you would want you know, in the structure of a site, depending on what you're using your site for. So keep that in mind. I use a WordPress enabled website theme as the basic structure. So I don't have to code anything. Once you have the theme installed, all you have to do is you go in and customize it to match your branding that you want, right? So I can change my colors and fonts and all that stuff. And I can add functionality into, you know, specific menu items and widgets on the sidebar. And I can add pictures and pages and all that stuff is all coming in through WordPress and my theme. And that's what I can do to actually customize my theme to make it look exactly how I want my website to look. Now, my website's actual structure. If you've ever been to my site, which is www.strangecharmed.com, 
If you poke around a little bit, you might notice that it actually appears as though I have multiple websites, but I have just one site with several subdomains and a bunch of custom URLs that redirect to the, to the proper part of my site. So you'll see if you go to www.strangeturn.com, that lands you to my blog, that is the main site. But then I have my shop, thecharmshop.com, that is a subdomain with a custom URL. Then I also have a business course website that is another subdomain for people who are in Empire Building, Charm DSLR. You guys all log into a totally different version of my site, but it's still on my site. And then for those of you who are in my productivity courses, you guys all log in to an yet another subdomain that is what it appears to be as another separate site, but it's really just a subdomain of my main website. Okay, so that's the structure of my website. When it comes to my blog itself, just so we're getting all the pieces clear. My blog, again, runs on the WordPress software. I use a bluechic.com theme, and I'm gonna go ahead and link as many resources as I can for you guys in the description, including um, Blue Chic. I do have an affiliate code for them, so if you're interested in purchasing a Blue Chic theme, I highly recommend them. They're beautiful, lovely. If you're running a female-owned business, I totally recommend them. Nothing additional is charged to you, and I just get a small fee for like being the referrer, essentially. So please think about using that link down below. And I will say that most of my blog is pretty standard. So it really is the WordPress, the Blue Chic, the Blue Chic theme, and then I've customized it. And I really don't have tons of additional plugins or anything beyond that. Everything that's on there that I'm using actively usually comes bundled with WordPress. You're gonna see when you download WordPress, they're gonna suggest other themes and things like that. And by themes, I'm sorry, it's gonna suggest other plugins and things that'll work with it. Same thing with the Blue Chic themes. It suggests to you other plugins that you might wanna have. So. I pretty much just have like an out of the box blog on my main site. For my shop, it's a little bit different, right? So my shop is again, a subdomain of my main site with a custom URL that redirects directly to it. So when you go to thecharmedshop.com, it takes you to a subdomain of my website. Seems like it's a different site, but it's not. I use, again, WordPress software, and I use a WooCommerce plugin to create the e-commerce shop. So for people who are interested in creating a shop, that is the plugin I use. That's what turns my site into a shop as opposed to like what my blog looks like, right? So I use WooCommerce enabled themes from, uh, specifically the one in my shop right now is from a place called themeforest.net. I Googled that for you guys to make sure that I was giving you the right locations. Don't have an affiliate link for them. Um, that's where my theme right now for my shop was purchased. But I also have like a blue chic shop theme that I want to switch to eventually when I have time to like work on the update. So um, I started with this one theme, I really liked it from the theme forest for WooCommerce. This was at a time where blue chic didn't have a lot of WooCommerce um, themes. So I had to go elsewhere for it. But now they do and I have one. So eventually, I would like to upgrade my shop to the new blue chic theme because I absolutely love the functionality of those themes. I cannot recommend them highly enough. Um, so I do have some extra plugins that are on my e-commerce shop um, that are a little bit a little bit different, I guess you'd say. So I do have um, something for PayPal payments, right? Because I can accept PayPal through my shop. I don't accept anything but PayPal, actually. I also have a plugin for MailChimp, which if you're not familiar, well, MailChimp is an email marketing software that I use. And that's like all the automated emails that you get from me on like a weekly basis, my newsletter, all those emails that I send out. Those come from MailChimp and I have an integration between WooCommerce and MailChimp so that all my customers are being, you know, their information is moved over to my email software so I can, you know, keep up to date with them. I also use a plugin called Beaver Builder to build custom pages. So that's something that I actually don't think I'm going to need to use a lot of in the future. Once I move to the Blue Chic theme, I think I'm not going to need that so much, but for now, that's what I do use to create like custom pages on my shop when I want something to look really custom and not necessarily look like it's just another page in my shop, if that makes sense. So that is how my shop is structured. Next, let's talk about the course websites. So I have two additional domains or subdomains, I'm sorry, on my site for each of my course membership websites. And both of them have their own like URL that redirects again to the proper place on my site. So I have one subdomain that is for my business courses and one that's for my productivity courses. So each again runs on WordPress and it uses a blue chic theme. I think I actually use the same theme on both of those sites. I've just customized them to look a little bit different. And each of them use the plugin called Wishlist Member to create a private membership site functionality. So that is the software I use. If you've ever seen behind the scenes in Empire Building, DSLR, 
if you're in like the productivity and planning mastermind or the you have the master planning masterclass, you may have seen these, you know, you're you've been in that website before and wishlist member is the plugin that actually creates the functionality so that I can have that membership site where you guys log in and pages are protected so people in the outside you know, who are not part of the course can't get in, right? So I do have in both of those sites, I do have pages that are meant for the public, but most of the pages and all the information is for paying members. And um, one of the greatest things about wishlist member as well, and I'm sure this is the same in other membership software, but this is the one that I was recommended and I use and I really like it. Um, it gives me the ability to have different membership levels. So I'm able to give, you know, if you purchase empire building, you're going to get empire building and not you know, the other courses or whatever on the site. Um, so you can actually, I can actually make it so that information stays um, with the person, you know, who paid for it, right? So it's not, you're not getting access to everything. You're getting access to just specific pages and information, which is really awesome. So that is how I have my membership site built essentially for my courses, my sites, because I have two of them. <laughs> okay, now um, continuing on with my website structure, I do want to be completely transparent that I know that the way that my site is set up right now is not necessarily ideal, but this is the organic evolution of my site and my business over the last eight years since I went to like a self-hosted WordPress site. So I started with a blog on that main site and then a few years later I added the shop and then I added those dedicated course sites to give me the functionality that I needed and it works for me. But if I was starting over right now from scratch, I know that I would make a few different choices, right? I'd probably most likely make it so that my blog and the shop were one thing and then maybe I have the dedicated sites for the other products, but uh, for the other courses. But yeah, it's not ideal. It's just what I've got going on. And so far it works for me fine. So that's really all that matters is that it works. I know where everything is. I understand how to use it. Um, everything moves smoothly with my, my, my websites. And that's really the most important part. So I don't want anyone who's starting right now to think, okay, if I want to have the same elements Alexis has in her business, I have to set everything up the same. You don't. Um, I've just kind of done what worked for me. And I'm sure, you know, it's probably possible for me to change some things up and marry my blog with my, you know, my e-commerce shop. I just haven't really looked into it. It hasn't been really that much of a high priority for me because like I said, everything works. It all looks good. Everything has its own custom thing. And, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way that works. So yeah, that's all that matters is that it works for me and all that matters is that your site works for you. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cost of having this website and what appears to be multiple websites. So because I only have one website with multiple subdomains, I just pay the hosting fee for one site, right? So I do have um, an expensive version of hosting. Like I said, I don't have like the lowest tier of hosting. Like hosting can just be like a few dollars a month to like $15 a month for like basic hosting if you have like a small website. And then I'm kind of in a tier that's more for like business um, servers. And it, like I said, it's a cloud-based server option where I do share my server with other businesses, but not as many. So I get a lot more power and a lot more storage on my servers, um, on my server for my site. So, you know, I've got a lot more computing and security and all that stuff that's helping to process and power my website. So I also pay for some plugins, right, to give me my, my site's added functionality. And of course, I pay for all the different URLs that I have that kind of go everywhere. And we like, you know, really touched on a few. I have a lot of URLs. I love getting URLs for everything and just sending everything, you know, to a dedicated place. Um, and all in, I would say, if I had to estimate like if we were saying a yearly cost, um, because sometimes when I'm purchasing things or I should say renewing anything, a lot of times it's like I'm renewing it at a price for like a few years. So if I had to break it down year over year, it's probably about $600 a year to run my sites, site sites as they are, right? So for some people that might seem like an astronomical amount, but this is a business website um, with a shop. I run a, you know, a full six figure passive income business with this shop and all of these sites. So for me, absolutely worth it, um, you know, small price to pay. And, you know, that represents a good chunk of what my bills are, I would say, for a year anyway. Like, obviously, I do pay for other business services as well, but this is a big portion of it, about $600 a year. And like I said, I built it all myself, so I don't have someone that, like, takes care of it for me. I do all the work myself, so I think it's pretty reasonable, um, and I'm pretty confident, you know, continuing being, you know, the webmaster of my site and doing things myself. So, now let's talk about how I learned to create my own website, because I know for a lot of people, this topic is scary, and they're like, how do you do this? Like, are you gonna mess it up? Like, how do I make everything work? 
like truthfully in the beginning i googled the process of how to build your own self-hosted website and i watched a lot of step-by-step -step tutorials i literally built my blog watching a tutorial on youtube and it took me just a few hours right so i had a, a video showing me exactly what i needed to do to build this self-hosted website signing up with the bluehost you know getting wordpress installed getting my theme and how to install that and how to customize and things like that so it really only took me like a few hours to build my initial site and i know it can seem intimidating but it's not really so if you can follow a recipe to create like new meals that you've never had before, I know that you can follow a step-by-step -step tutorial to go ahead and build your own custom website. It really isn't that difficult. So now let's talk about understanding all the tech and the plugins. Because like I said, as my site evolved over the years and my business has evolved and I've needed to have new things put into my site, I've had to understand a lot of new technology and be confident in using it and setting it up, etc. So at this point, my website isn't a standard blog anymore. And with all the upgrades and changes, I had to research plugins and additional software to help me build the site exactly as I wanted it. Some of the upgrades were recommendations from other business owners. Like I said, Wishlist Member was something that I have a business bestie who uses it, came highly recommended, so I started using it. But I was able to really Google a lot of things that I wanted without really knowing what was out there, right? So if I had a problem, I would just Google how to do this on a website, how to get this functionality on a WordPress website, right? And I would be redirected to articles that would suggest to me different plugins and different solutions. And what I would do is just search for a tutorial on it and I would look at it and see if it actually worked. And then I would do the tutorial if it was what I wanted to do. So the good news is that every piece of software and plugin that I purchased had tons of video tutorials. Usually the creators of a lot of plugins for websites and things like that will publish a lot of great information for how to use their tool. Same thing with like Blue Sheik and their websites, their themes. They give you such an amazing like resource library of like tutorials and how to's to create every different little customization you could think of, which is amazing. And it's obviously, you know, they run a business selling tutorial uh, selling themes and so they have tutorials for how to use it and how to get the most out of it so if you think about it there really isn't a lot of information out there that's going to be um hard for you to find a lot of times if you're interested in, in a plugin if you're interested in some upgrade or something like that there's going to be a tutorial that is going to walk you through step by step and you're literally watching a video and then doing it on your the back end of your computer and, and the back end of your software and you're easily able to follow along right? So we are totally in the information age. And if you can set aside the time to focus on following a video tutorial, you can learn how to set up your site with all the functionality you need over the course of a weekend, no coding required. Like I said earlier, my very first blog, right? When I first set up my self-hosted website, my blog, that just took me a few hours, like under three hours just to get everything set up for my hosting, the theme and all that. Now I knew what I was going to choose for my theme and everything ahead of time. I had done my research but putting it all together only took me a few hours. Same thing with actually creating my shop as well. That was only a couple of hours. I was actually very shocked to figure out like how easy it was to actually get that set up. And then of course there's time that you're gonna need to spend creating each product, right? And each listing in your shop. But once you figure that out, that kind of just becomes routine as well. The most difficult aspect of my site that I had to put together for myself, honestly, was probably the membership sites with Wishlist Member. And that was just because there was so many pages I needed to create. And there's like a whole process for, you know, you install the plugin and then you create all the pages with all the information for your program or your course or your membership, whatever you're putting together. And then you have to kind of like go through page by page and set like settings and privacy and things like that. So putting together each of my membership websites maybe took me a day each. Um, but again, if you had like a simpler course than mine or a simpler membership than mine, it might actually be quicker. Installing a plugin just takes like a couple of minutes, right? It's usually just doing the work of building the pages and building the site out to look the way you want and like how you want it to all interact and you know how you want like the navigation to be and things like that that's usually just the hardest part of building the site so you know once you have an idea for what you want to create i would definitely recommend like just listing all of it out like how you want it to see like this is the first page and these are all the different pages and these are how i want all of the pages to interact and things like that because doing the tech in the back end is actually that's actually the easiest part i would say of the entire process of even building a website because so much of this 
is uh, so much of the technology and everything is so plug and play and so user friendly. So I hope that helps you to like feel better and feel more empowered and courageous to create your own website. Because I'm telling you, if you can follow a recipe, you can follow the directions and a tutorial to put together the website that you want for your business. Now let's talk about getting some additional guidance from me because I know you're sitting here watching this video and you're probably thinking, Alexis, I know you're saying it's easy, but I would love to have a little bit of help from you. So I just want to make it very clear that I personally do not build websites for clients. However, I do provide excellent support for website building to my students in empire building. So if you're interested in starting a business and learning my complete digital marketing process, I would love for you to join empire building. So when you join, I already have a number of resources for website building in the course, but you also get a year of email support from me. Meaning if you need a resource that I don't already have in the course, you let me know, you send me an email and I will get it to you. If you want to know more precise details about something you see in my business, ask and I will share all of my secrets with you. I really provide an excellent level of support that I do not provide anywhere else to my students in Empire Building, right? So there'll be a link in the description box of this video to Empire Building if you wanna check it out and you wanna learn more. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about in this video is that CEO Strategy Planner. If you're someone who is seriously interested right now in creating a business website and that's what drew you to this video, or you're someone who's already in the process of building your business website and your business out, um, then this really is a resource and a tool that is meant for you. It is a strategic business planner, the CEO strategy planner. It is over 60 undated print on demand inserts. It is the ultimate business planning tool. I designed it for creative entrepreneurs, small business owners, bloggers, YouTubers, podcasters, and social media influencers. It will help you to create a vision for your business and break that vision down into manageable steps. It'll help you set clear objectives and outline plans that help you work more efficiently. It'll help you maximize your marketing efforts by organizing and outlining content campaigns and messages. And it's gonna help you keep a close eye on all your financial targets to grow your income, shrink your expenses, and get direct visibility to your business's profitability. Let me go ahead and walk you through all of the inserts that you get within the CEO Strategy Planner. The first set of inserts are the business planning inserts. Here you get the business plan divider, the executive summary, target market, brand vision, monthly objectives overview, the yearly business plan, the quarterly business plan, and the monthly business plan. Under the business objective inserts, you get an objectives divider, the workflow insert, project plan insert, the project budget, and the project tracker. In the marketing plan set of inserts, you get the marketing plan divider, content brainstorm, the content planner, the content outline, content tracker, the campaign builder, and under the financial planning inserts, you get the finances divider, the PL, which is, stands for profit and loss statement, you get the yearly financial overview, a monthly bill tracker, a yearly bill tracker, income and expense tracker, savings tracker, and a donation tracker. And of course, I've got a bunch of really awesome downloads to go along with the CEO strategy planner. You will get a set of exclusive printable planner tabs so you can make your planner as organized in all the different sections that you need. I'm also gonna give you a CEO strategy cover and dashboard. That's the design that says my favorite position is CEO. You'll also get an inbox and outbox divider page, monthly dividers for every month of the year, and the CEO desktop wallpaper and smartphone wallpaper design as well. And those are the wallpapers that I use on my computer and on my phone. And let me just tell you about a few miscellaneous things as well, just so you get all the details in, so you know if this is right for you. The file itself prints at half letter, A5 letter, and A4. It comes with detailed print instructions, it is undated, so you can use it year over year. It's print on demand, so you have all the inserts you need whenever you need it. And it integrates nicely with the physical or digital planner of your choice. And when I say physical or digital planner, I mean like a calendar system, right? So this is not really a calendar system. This is really a set of strategic business planning inserts for you to really map out all of your business plans, objectives, marketing, finances, etc. Of course, there will be a link in the description box for you to purchase your copy of the CEO Strategy Planner. I highly recommend checking it out. It is perfect for you if you're someone who's really right now at the stage of building your website or you already have started your business and you really wanna get strategic and make sure you're spending your time effectively and efficiently 
running your business, the CEO Strategy Planner is really the ultimate set of business planning inserts that a creative entrepreneur or business owner would need. So that is everything you need to know about how I built my business website. I hope that this video helped answer your questions about building a website and how I have mine set up and gave you some ideas for how you can tackle the objective of creating your own business website if that's something that you need. Of course, like I mentioned, I'm gonna leave a link down below um, for as many resources as I can, as well as to Empire Building, if you would like to join Empire Building and learn from me and get that sort of personalized support from me for a year for building your business in every different way you can think of, um, definitely check out Empire Building. And of course, I highly recommend the CEO Strategy Planner. It is the ultimate business planning tool for creatives. And so with that, I just wanna remind you to go ahead, give this video a thumbs up, Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and feel free to follow me over on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat for more of the behind the scenes of my productivity life and business. And until next time, bye-bye.